We are thrilled to kick off this second day here in Philly with two guests who are well versed in all things Pennsylvania education. Andrew Kuhn and Patrice Simichek co-host the Change It podcast and are stepping outside of their podcast studio to join us here in ours this morning. Such a pleasure to have you both. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Let's talk first about the podcast. How did this come into existence? Who is your intended audience? Our intended audience is educators, but that is very open-ended so it could be educators that are currently in the classroom ones that have retired or even pre-service teachers that are still on their journey to getting their own classroom and it came about because we have new science standards here in pennsylvania mm -hmm. and we found that we were part of really great conversations and we wanted to share those out so we figured if we record those conversations they're free and available for all to hear to help them in their growth of professional learning and we found that professional development done in the traditional way hasn't really been super successful. And having access to small bite-sized learning at your fingertips is a great way to get some education going. And you both have a background in teaching. Yes. And you now take part in helping educate edu educators. Yes. Okay. So let's turn to a very hot topic, uh, not only on your podcast recently, but also just, you know, in the world today. AI. Where do you both stand on bringing AI into the classroom and making it a part of the curriculum? So I gotta be honest, originally I was apprehensive about adding more technology into a classroom, especially after COVID, uh, considering we've had so many instances of students just using technology in inappropriate ways. Right. But I've become a convert, I guess you could say, where I think that if we introduce AI in uh, effective and intelligent ways in terms of how are we making sure that we have access for everybody and that we are making sure that students have opportunities uh, to continue to enhance their learning kind of in a safe space. Andrew, you agree? Absolutely. I think the, the correct question is not if we should, but how do we correctly go about implementing it? Because in, in reality, AI is the printing press of our lifetime mm -hmm. and it's going to change the way that everything happens and everything that we do. So how do we best prepare the upcoming generation to live into that reality. Yeah. And you've talked about this on your podcast. What has the reaction been from educators who have tuned in? Are they slowly coming around or do you think that there is a lot of resistance? I think people fall into one of three categories. We have the early adopters and they're light years ahead of us. Okay. And then we have some that are trying out some new stuff and thinking about how can we incorporate some things beyond just Google Docs and things like that in our classroom. And then we have the resistors. So I think we've got kind of the gamut. For uh, teachers who are kind of the early adopters and who are really gung-ho about wanting to implement this curriculum now, do you get the sense that they feel like they're handcuffed a little bit because there's still so much skepticism? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah, that's a good no, one. That's no, a good that's a very good one. I was I'm letting you talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, I would say yes, because there's still a lot that we don't know. And the reality is, is that AI changes so rapidly. By the time we have a, a group meeting and conversation about it, all the information we have might be outdated. Mm -hmm. So it's it's trying to create systems that empower us and that are larger than just using a product but are focused on the process and the potential that there is with AI. So to answer your question, yes, a lot of teachers can feel restricted because they might feel like they're their own pioneer headed towards an island where not many people are located. Right. So when it does come to maybe bringing AI into the classroom, what can we do to make sure that we're doing it safely, that we are protecting these students, and that we're really putting parents' concerns at ease as well? That's a great question, and I think we can try to have some answers. Okay. Um, I think, it, it, like Andrew said, it changes all the time. So I think as districts, they need to have policies in place that are not necessarily like a lock it and block it type thing, but more of a, we're going to have a system in place that allows us to look at AI tools, make sure that we're looking at equitable access, that we're looking at maintaining our expenses, looking at privacy things that are in place through the companies as well as through our districts. So I think making sure that we're using it in that way, but also teaching them how to use it appropriately is the biggest tool I think we have in our toolbox is to let them play, but let in a safe space, like right. I said before. With some parameters. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of really strong pedagogy focused systems that we've created already in education. So it's shifting that mindset of, okay, th th what does that look like in the landscape of AI? How do we implement that? And how do we empower students so that they can authenticate the information that they're receiving and use it moving forward? Another question for you about the podcast. What do you feel educators most want from your podcast? What are they most interested in hearing or maybe the um, you know, information they're most, most interested in learning about? I think for Pennsylvania specifically, which is where ours is targeted, mm -hmm. is this new shift in standards. We haven't had new standards in 20 years. And so the things that we're looking at in science didn't even exist 
our knowledge didn't even exist 20 years ago. So I think they're looking at how do I take what's being asked of, um, from the state and how do I put that into practice? And our goal is, is not to necessarily inform, but present the information. And, and we want them to be able to Monday morning quarterback with our podcast and have conversations with the others and enter into discourse and enter into that space where they can consider something new or different. How beneficial is it for you both to have the NSTA National Conference be here in Philadelphia and really help you guys shine a light on some of these new standards that maybe we're not talking about enough? I think it's been phenomenal. We've seen so many people that we know from Pennsylvania across the state being able to be in their backyard. It's huge to have access to people who have been doing the NGSS standards for a lot longer so we can learn from their do's and don'ts from what they've done in the past. Where can folks find the podcast? Anywhere that, that individuals listen to a podcast, they can link in and look for us, Change Ed, spelled like changed, it's <laughs> pronounced Change Ed. Uh, you can also visit our website that, where they can directly link into our episodes. It's changeed.buzzsprout.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for your time today and best of continued luck and success with the podcast. Thanks. Thank you. Looking for more science education content? Click right here to find the NSTA TV playlist and enjoy.